right. Yay. All right. And can we move you just a tiny bit? There we go. Okay, great. Well, I'm so happy and proud to welcome you here this evening. I am Shane Mullen. I'm the event coordinator for Left Bank Books. It is with our incredible sponsors that we have uh, Left Bank Books, Tech Artista, Closure Creative, The Narrative, Webster University, the Department of Art, Design, and Art History, that we were able to do this incredible event. It is so lucky that St. Louis has such a gem as Ivor. I'm certain that you are all very familiar with his work, uh, but it is really incredible to be able to, as an event coordinator, welcome someone who means so much to the literary community, the art community, and the world. Uh, also, as a personal note, uh, we are being joined tonight by an absolute legend of literature who shaped a lot of my English degree in college, Edmund White, so I'm personally very excited. Tonight's event, um, on our part, is possible because of your support. When you buy a book from Left Bank Books, it allows us to continue bringing you incredible events. We produce over 100, actually over 200 events per year. Uh, we are producing events into the virtual space, so you can watch events like this from wherever you are. And I'm certain that we have people, we do have people joining us from afar that are watching virtually this evening. Uh, so be sure to check out our event calendar, uh, check out our Facebook, social media to find out about more incredible events. Another former St. Louisan that is going to be welcomed in just a couple of days, uh, Curtis Settenfeld will be joining us on April 11th, and that is a ticketed event and tickets are on sale now. Tickets are also on sale now for Andy Cohen, which is also incredible. Um, but it is through your purchase of books and through your supporting our event series that we are able to do such incredible things. So thank you so much for being here this evening. I would also like to mention that all the artwork on display tonight is available for purchase. And you can see Sophia to answer any questions about that process. Uh, I know that it is absolutely stunning work. Uh, I did get to spend time with book, so I saw all of the work in a much smaller format and now I'm getting to see it in a large format. I am quite envious of any of you that go home and put this under your wall. Uh, tonight's book. So just brief remarks. This is a landmark American novel hailed by the New York Times as J.D. Salinger crossed with Oscar Wilde. It is masterfully reimagined as a timeless graphic novel. It was featured in Interview Magazine, Harper's Magazine, The Daily Beast, and on Scott Alexander Hess's hot list. Scott Alexander Hess has frequently visited the store, so that's an incredible list to be on. John Irving, the author of The World According to Garp and The Cider House Rules, says, a provocative coming-of-age story adapted for a new generation of readers, offering further insight and emotional depth to a landmark work in the panoply of LGBTQ fiction a true tribute to the original and to Edmund White's inimitable voice on the 40th anniversary of this of his breakthrough novel's publication. And LBB favorite Alison Bechtel, the author of Fun Home and the Secret to Superhuman Strength says, in this gorgeous graphic adaptation, much of Edmund White's subl subl sublimely <laughs> raw prose is absent by necessity, but the exquisite dreamlike illustrations by Igor Parash have their own distinctive power to immerse us in the young narrator's loneliness and relentless self-consciousness. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite a feat in a format that relies on showing rather than telling. This is a vivid and sens sensuous new take on White's coming of age classic. And now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our in-person guest of the evening, Igor Karash. Igor is an <laughs> Igor is an illustrator based in St. Louis, Missouri, originally from Baku, Baku, Azerbaijan. Karash's illustration work is diverse and includes picture books, classic literature, novels, and concept art for theater and film. Karash develops a visual language unique to each project and transforms the reading experience with his novel visual contributions. Karash's work has been recognized by numerous prestigious illustration competitions, including the House of Illustration 
Folio Society, and AOI Awards in London. Igor's work has, are, has also been featured in Lutzer, um, probably very wrong on <laughs> Archives 200 Best Illustrators Worldwide, American Illustration 32, 34, and 38, Graphis, 3 by 3 Magazine, and the Society of Illustrators 61 and 63 Annual and Exhibit. Karasha's Illustrator Profile is part of Tasha's The Illustrator, 100 Best from Around the World Edition, curated by Stephen Heller and Julius Weidemann. Without, did I forget to do anything? Oh, uh, be sure to stick around. After the event, we will be having a book signing across the, over there, uh, and I will be selling books right here. And now, if you would all please let me in warmly welcoming you to our Introduction, thank you, Sean, and I could like briefly say that uh, we appreciate your Van Burke's involvement in this, uh, you know, putting together this event, and Chris Holtz, uh, tech artista, and uh, you know, helping with organizing and putting out together this exhibit and uh, presentation, book signing, etc. Uh, you know, Sean told you all everything about literary significance. Of uh, and Wyatt's work, and I will probably do more focus on my thoughts as going through this uh, uh, interesting commission, assignment, and beautiful collaboration, really. So, uh, Sean, if you can uh, mm -hmm. it, and, uh, I have this prepared for a small, uh, quick speech for 15 minutes, and uh, I will also say in advance that uh, we are it's not only sponsors and this uh, and family, <laughs> all the way through this two and a half years, it was like life support and actually uh, private work, and the circle here, and various ways setting up and exhibit all by what we were talking about. So I appreciate that. <laughs> So, uh, so we uh, will talk a little bit about my process. So we know where we are, this story, that novel, about uh, a new boy, growing up within this functional family, and uh, his very sexual awakening, he was very confused. And it's bad, and it's it is my best. <laughs> and he's also one of the great adults who have no understanding of what's wrong with him. It's not something wrong. <laughs> so, uh, if we go to the next step, so, but uh, I'll put like six chapters, exactly the same chapter, and I know that is in the book. Chapter one, finding evil. <laughs> and it's really how this happened. Like, what were the chances that of my wife, his wife, Michael Carroll, and another writer, Brian Sandler, will find me if we go to our house? So, uh, just one day I heard from Brian through email Hey, you know, we have a mutual friend, Linda Staszewski, uh, and she was a and but she said that maybe you be able to help us with you know, some kind of work. And then uh, I mumbled something with someone, oh maybe but I'm kind of busy, or maybe I can look at it, or what it is, and I'm out of anything like kind of stuff <laughs> talking. And then uh, Michael, you know, we this lot of like, good conversation. Uh, hey, but uh, this uh, wonderful, yeah, we think what you mean, but it has a gay sex, nudity, sexual, sexual explicit scenery, child nudity, and all of that things. And I said, like, that's really the uh, key, you know, kind of helping the story to be told, and it's part of the story. Sure, I, I want to create new content, new ideas, new concepts, and new. Concepts. I think if, uh, but I wasn't happy with this book. So if we go to next story, and yeah, I think I have to give a guy a huge 
period because through the whole two and a half years of this process of making, he didn't say one thing. <laughs> he was probably looking at some you know, sketches and things. He generally agreed on the concept, but once he kind of uh, broke his silence and said that uh, his hair would always grow dark. <laughs> but all was dark because I kind of wanted to put his hair in the book his character a little wider and angelic kind of look. And he never said a word of the word. He never said a word So let's go to the next chapter. And then chapter two. So we started to uh, kind of work and talk and think about how to deal with this challenge in the project. And basically, first thing that I realized that I had to educate myself. Things again, you know, we find out this, you know, everybody here, you know, I'm not first here. <laughs> in my country, especially, we have a thing with like, you know, basically you know, sexual orientation or queerness or gay or lesbian or LGBTQ. Like so, we can go to next step. So, obviously, uh, normally with my classes, I have to uh, immerse into something. Concept. And uh, what I do before we start to do, I, I put in together some kind of scenarios, um, visual vocabulary for the future project, where it could be. And one of those concepts listed was four different ways to approach the book. And I can say that I was the one who did it before. So I was, you know, first thing I did, I started to read the book. And I kind of listed it. It's an incredible literature. Work which in my mind was you know, sort of like a clear reminder or something like that. So, uh, one concept was setting up the show, which was kind of connected with American film, and uh, that means that we use in this other space, but I'm happy. So, so, it's kind of happy surface and human. And in the end, actually, uh, we can go to the next uh, uh, slide. Uh, the other one was reason of lost innocence, the concept that I realized. I found the work uh, art that was done by underground artists, uh, real artists in New York City. Uh, and uh, and some of the David Lynch's kind of. Uh, in, which, you know, in the book, there's a lot of uh, this really. Sensitivity is in some kind of logical world that goes together. So, this was about uh, that. Uh, so, basically, this page was about approaching sexuality, expressive content, and the story of the expressive and the you know, I was thinking how to do that in a materialistic uh, way that was kind of sense of uh, interesting artistic expression. We can go to the next slide, then finding love and basically realize there's a lot of components to the story and realize that it's a little bit of a story of my love and kind of some kind of attention and development of things. That was again what I did some art in my images for my art and for my art. Some of the other children I realized in the big. Of the art of this understand as a ironic sense sensibility And then we go to our next slide. Uh, and then I definitely, you know, I mentioned one more. Is about this, who is famous for this concept of painting, and that work is kind of not uh, honestly the taboos and things that I mentioned. And then later on, so I presented these four uh, 
concepts will be Joseph's sketches slide. And then we'll go into chapter three, where I felt like I really need to really start expressing myself through the map. So and uh, we'll go to the next slide. So Vicky, this is really probably two things that I input on the digital screen. And one was basically uh, rent volume, where the you know, story starts the argument and this kind of kind of scene with you know, talking to each other. It's kind of, you know, experimentation with a little bit of texture, a little bit of color, a little bit of paint, without really knowing what I'm doing. I just wanted to kind of express myself visually with some kind of concept of this story. And then we can go to next. Then I started to kind of look at the characters, uh, this amazing uh, kind of introduction of father in the story, which is really important for every boy, father is really important for the boy. So, uh, and I don't know what we're talking about, but uh, you know, there are some kind of uh, really complex relations between them. So, he had an like, explicit uh, uh, introduction of, of his father, how he has his breakfast in the morning. And actually, it was in the morning, not in the morning, but in the good evening, because he was working all night uh, and waking up at four or five in the morning. <laughs> and then back there, you see, it was so dark, and you must think it's in the morning, but it's in the good evening. <laughs> All right, we can go to the next. And then uh, his father was also an understanding romanizer, and there's a little bit of sense of not so much in the book, but a civilization that was taking place in the pictures in America. They stay every family and his wife and then see the white mountains and those black servants and uh, see if father sits in the living cafe or in the swamp kitchen. And he was walking on the road, he's kind of not thinking uh, of doing kind of dirty looks. <laughs> that was what I did. And this, all this drawing didn't have actual anything to do with actual script. I just wanted to uh, put myself in the right form. All right, we can do it next. And there, I mentioned before, some dreams. Early erotic explorations of sexual conversation. I wanted to maybe try to express certain things through this imaginary human symbol. A little bit of that we can probably find inside of the pages. We can go next. And I, you know, because you know, this is my first book uh, you know, imagining myself coming from this illustration. And I thought, look, yeah, comic art and comic book is, you know, has some kind of expected somewhere for the styles and comic and culture. And I kind of give it a try to put everything in the old familiar comic attitude. And then everybody hated it. You know, part of this kind of realism, realism, realism. And we basically screwed up. Long and we can go to next screen, you know, finding the right visual language between the screen. This real quick, uh, that's where the things started to make more sense. When I kind of read the book, I read the script, which was fantastic. It's like almost like reaching the Brian Alexander, the one that they do in the book. And more and more than we probably saw with Baltus paintings and some paintings from the Grand New York, American stories. And then one day I think, yeah, I didn't think of him because, you know, for me, Baltus and the book are this large and Loneliness in this kind of amazing painting, but it's a really great representation of the 
And then the cover of the book, basically, I feel like final um, concept of this is done as a painting start in the green copy of colors. That's how I think it is. Because if you look at the cover, it's all happy, shiny, it's boy, and it's all happy surface, and inside there's a lot of Not only painting, but not a lot of So we can go to the next. Uh, and, and then I had to make a sort of good presentation. And I was asked basically because we still have these kind of formal clients, artist relations. And uh, you know, my job was to establish this look here and five, six examples of how I used to And when I started to work basically, this is all the pages of this kind of. Color review and uh, uh, color system. Uh, you know, I used this kind of Photoshop uh, <laughs> uh, templates to create this kind of you know, look. We can go to the next page. And this is basically early paintings that you see uh, unfinished, but we kind of sell about this intriguing book. And uh, this is already work, like a page uh, examples. And all those actually, you see this print now, one of the ones, this legend has changed much because the world of the world can So all these things became the records that we use for the world of uh, the next. And uh, all this is part of the book. Basically, the way of the uh, surface work. Uh, that, that took me a couple of months to create. Uh, so, basically, pre design the illustration parts of this video. I can put together for the concept and then uh, pages. Uh, and then we can go further. Yeah, all this work like part of this first big presentation. I can say we book, and uh, and we started to run with it. It's going further. Now, next slide. Yeah, basically it's all the same. You know, part of that first big presentation, and then I can show you really quick if we need more time. To go to the next, uh, yeah. So, chapter five is basically drawing the book, and I can show you just uh, my process frame by frame. The whole thing was drawn by hand by using stylus and etc. Because uh, I realized otherwise it would take me five or six years to accomplish. And plus, I'm not an artist virtuoso. Establish something from star and began to I can work in the world, I am working and changing and layers and layers and layers. So it's not really hard to have a decision. So, uh, so basically, I started my first process was basically making drawings for the whole entire 260 pages because otherwise. Uh, you know, my you know, part of my work experience was wonderful, but you have to also put the side a little bit of some transitions and uh, where to stop, reverse attention, and where to make it fast. So, that whole work, and I really appreciate you know, my baby lives now, my wife, my uncle, and my wife, for being so on the same page. With me. Basically, we discussions, everything. Even your, the, your, 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 the big your challenge for us is, is to show good sketch from and see that some people cannot read sketches. 
and they were also be able to see what's happening and people who have uh, this financial uh, understanding from the land. So basically, all the, you know, all the drawings again, on one wall, you know, scene by scene, people here, and I started to add some you know, textual elements, you know, dialogue bubbles, and text from after. Uh, we can go further, and so basically, so I love it. this is first sketch for mother that's sitting in the kitchen. So, okay. so that's you know, it was fast, but you know, fast few months to judge to succeed in this process. This is a deep length piano that you see around the face. Yeah. We can go further, yeah, and then, you know, more I do, more I was complicated things, and some drawings actually look even more like complicated in a way, but some are good enough. Yeah. So we can go further, and then chapter six, you know, building layers, building settings, and building you know, tighter uh, connections and scenery, and the final. So we can go with that. So basically, from that uh, original drawings, I mean, you know, I was probably working this comic uh, with a comic artist in the past. You know, I didn't do, I didn't make any character development too much. I started real with the popular in the website, uh, 50 probably different characters in the book. And I was just drawing them as I did, because otherwise it was really hard so much time. And I didn't put like a really hard line on anything. It basically more like painting scenery and figures in there and you think about what's happening and how I mentioned it and how to connect it to story. And basically you see this one, two, three, this is my own process. Stage and final transition. Let me go to next slide. And basically, you know, from that quick stage of um, that is obvious, and this scenery in the figure, you see this kind of process from the stage to the development to the vision to the final. And I can tell you, you know, I mentioned my family. Lana is here, she is the production artist. She did a lot of backgrounds and some figures. She's better than me in other drawings, so she was not a lot of pair of eyes, professional eyes, and a little bit of certain elements of things that we have all this group of time. So we can go to next. Uh, yeah, that's a, some of my, you know, favorite. Well, I, you know, I still kind of, you know, maybe I have some question for some professional people who, if they would like to see the their model be done like that, with really, really large strokes. And I feel like maybe probably it's not enough to understand the culture and situation. So that's where, because I still love these kind of things. And I don't have them anymore because I can have it in a way of more famous detail. But to me, this way of speaking, but maybe I don't know. It's hard to, for me to think about it. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, this is sort of like an example of previous, you know, that scenery that I've done to the final. And this one might be <laughs> so we can go to the next slide, and this is also like an earlier interview of studies for every single So it, it looks like painting to me. I don't know, maybe I can but it's all it's a digital, it's just uh, mostly pretty design and brushes and things like that. <laughs> so, uh, and we can go, and this uh, actually, a couple of prints are part of this uh, 
collection of your serum and final result. So there are for good for from that that they are kind of changed from glass stroke to fungus. And we can yeah have a kind of uh, medium and uh, finished painting. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, I still got some of this kind of experimentation, but you know, we can find it uh, you know, useful to learn more resolution, <laughs> especially in the graphic power that is meant to be more excellent. So, so. so then we can go to the next. So, so this is how this page goes. Analyzed and then we will know uh, how to, you know, characteristics and then we So uh, I think we, we can do it to next slide. You know? Yeah, this is basically the you know, final page in the book. And uh, we were basically playing with, you know, this is whole team, and I imagine us as a police. In a place that is a group called Buck Club, where a young AD found his friends and they were doing some stuff <laughs> in religious school. So, so I placed us back in that spot, and uh, I was actually playing the classic bass. I'm not sure about the Brian and Michael. I imagine that to be, you know, us to be a really tight uh, rock band. And so it's time to introduce uh, Michael Carroll, one of the author of Streets, Brad Alexander, Igor Crash. This is, uh, I didn't talk much about Ryan Alexander, who actually came up with the idea five, six years ago about idea of making that now out of this beautiful model. And he was basically working with all of us as a mixing editor and producer and all things business and talking to you know, publisher and back and forth, giving us all freedom and space for creativity. So I now we can celebrate uh, authors and yeah, they were waiting. I don't know if they were listening to things I was saying about them. <laughs> we heard everything, Igor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. See you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, so did everybody enjoy Igor's presentation? Uh, so maybe we can get started with who, like, just talk about your input in the book. Uh, so your role in the creation of. Um, so I guess, do you want me to start, Michael? We'll just sort of framing it. Yeah, I think Igor covered, I couldn't quite hear everything Igor was saying during his presentation, but I think he did touch on the genesis. And it was Ryan's idea to adapt it into a graphic novel maybe seven or eight years ago. Uh, and he and Michael had been talking about it for a while. And then I came into the picture in January 2017. That's when I met Michael and Edmund and Ryan. And they had told me that they were sort of kicking around this idea of adapting a boy's own story into a graphic novel. And I, um, I tried to sort of uh, expedite that happening. And Michael created the sort of a uh, sort of skeletal outline, uh, rough draft of a script, if you will, of what that would look like. And then um, I took it for a couple of months and integrated um, various other elements of Ed's life because I know him pretty well. So we expanded the story beyond Ohio in the 1950s and brought it to New York in the 60s. And 
um, Paris and New York in the 70s and 80s, and we, we ended it in 1990 with the protagonist turning 50. Uh, so it was really the full arc of a one gay man's life in the second half of the 20th century. And it covers everything from the oppression of the 50s to the liberation of the 60s and 70s to the devastation of AIDS in the 80s. Um, and Michael, did you want to add to that? No, that sounds good. That's yeah. pretty much everything, right? I mean, we, we did take some liberties uh, with Ed's text. Right. But I mean, I think the main thing is we knew that we wanted to make it more visual. And I think yes. what, what you said is part of that. It took away some of the monotony of a, a single storyline in any given episode. And, um, and there was a lot more visual excitement because of the ideas you came up with. Well, also, we spoke a lot about how do we show, because so much of the book is uh, internal ruminations, right? It's happening in the protagonist's minds and his, uh, his mind and his observations. Yeah. So how do we show that, right? How do we make a thought visual? And we had to actually carve out whole scenes of action. We had to make behavior. Scenes. Yeah, we had to make scenes out of Ed's, you know, beautiful poetry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. There were, I mean, it was the absolute uh the threads of it were there but it wasn't enough to actually make a scene it was just enough to make a scene but it wasn't enough to we had to actually create stuff that might not be true to his life but anyway it was a novel to begin with right 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 people forget that it's a novel <laughs> it's yeah. not a memoir yeah, it's not, not a memoir right. every right. fourth reading that's what it's referred to as yeah And Ryan, to add Ryan to that? Oh yeah, just working with everyone and turning your script and teaching guy, kind of walking you guys through how to turn things into a graphic novel script was a really fun process. That was you. Uh, yeah. I was going through visualizing this this journey that I had imagined as like a kid when I was a teenager reading it. So it was really fun to see it through y'all's eyes and then sort of transform that into a very visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, and try to capture that really unique voice. And you guys did a great job, really great job. Well, thank you. And Igor, you did you did a pretty good job too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Igor hasn't subtract from the whole thing. Oh, look at him. Hey, man. Hey, Igor. You too. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Igor, did you tell the story? You told the story of how we met, right, through Luba? Yes. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will send you this whole presentation. You'll see. So. Okay. Great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I touch on that. And that chapter called uh, Finding Igor. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love your, the format that you took. <laughs> Ed, what, uh, what are some of your thoughts about how the graphic novel turned out? Well, I think it's so beautiful. And, uh, the, and that uh, Igor's drawings of, of, of late sunlight on brick is very much the... Uh, uh, spirit of the book and uh, and and I can't say it's the way I visualize it because of course that is different with each reader but it, I think it's a beautiful way and and a perfect visual equivalent yeah, I agree do um, any of the uh, audience members have questions specific questions maybe for any of us I'm curious for Ed and Kyle to Shane, you may have to repeat the question for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering how it feels to kind of come back to this book after so long and to uh, sort of revisit it after so many years, you know, what feels different about it now? Um, obviously the story's expanded, but yeah, just curious if you could speak to that. Me? me? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, you know, I uh, I tried to stay out of the way of these young creative <laughs> people and, uh, uh, you know, and let them have their own vision of it. But then when I read through it, of course, I was wonderfully surprised. 
so I got to hear a little bit of your conversation ahead of the event, and you were talking about going to see. Um, Oh, uh, what what are you seeing on, who's seeing what on Broadway or in the UK that's an avid? Oh, movie? Ryan is going to go see Brokeback Mountain at the West End, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, which started as a, as a novella, became right. a movie, now as a play. Um, so I'm wondering, like, what your feelings are and what your um, ideas might be for other adaptations that this book might take on and also how you feel about the adaptations as a whole, what what the world might uh, gain from having other books be adapted into graphic novels. Well, we probably can't talk yet, right, Ryan, about what's happening with this project beyond uh, <laughs> right now yeah. in this moment, but- um, it's Exploding. We, we, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have hopes that it will become eventually something um, cinematic. But I mean, generally speaking, uh, I know that was really vague, I'm sorry, but we can't, <laughs> we can't speak specifically yet about anything. Um, I, I hope, we hope, the reason why we did this is because we hope to introduce Ed's work, not just the boy's own story, but his whole corpus to a new generation of readers, um, younger, even younger readers. Right, Michael, that's something, and Ryan, we spoke about throughout the process was, we do hope that this, um, you know, invites new readers to discover his work. Yeah, that, that's the main reason we did it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was because I read this book years ago and I was starting to mix with like millennials younger than me. I'm an elder millennial, I like to say. <laughs> uh, and people didn't know what it was. And I was like, that's just a shame because I've read some of the contemporary um, gay lit on the market. And I was kind of like, oh, well, nothing's really like tickling my fancy in the way that this did. Like, it's just so much more soulful in a way. Um, and I, I just like felt compelled and like I owed it to Ed and I met Ed, God, eight years ago, seven years ago. Um, and I don't get starstruck, but when mm -hmm. I, and I've, I've worked with a name drop, a bunch of celebrities and stuff like that. But when I met Ed at a party, I was just like, hi, hi, <laughs> you're Ed and White. Okay. And I was all nervous and everything. It was great. So when um, Ed was up for this and was Michael was on board for it, I was just so, so, uh, so flattered to go on the journey. Um, but I'm I mean, still nervous around you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. I just wanted to bring this to a new audience. Um, and graphic novels are huge now. I've um, kind of had <clears throat> about having a really great editor mentor um, training me on on sort of the graphic novel process and everything. Um, and it just seemed like a wonderful forum. For this. Just a wonderful forum. And I've. I've just heard so much great conversation about it. Um, if you see all the press that was coming out, it's just like we've been getting so much dialogue around this book and Ed's other works too. Um, so yeah, I think we achieved something there. You achieved what you set out to do. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's about starting a conversation, right? Yeah. And check out Ed's new books too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has a new book coming out in May uh, called The Humble Lover. It's really fantastic. I read it back in January. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, a, book. it's a book about a ballet dancer. And I'm, I, I'm sure that in England, the only people who will review it are ballet critics who will say <laughs> I got everything wrong. <laughs> Any audience questions? You know, one of the things that really struck us was how much um, uh, Igor's art, his aesthetic, reminded us of uh, Edward Hopper's. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Michael is going into the lilies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I heard laughter from the gallery. <laughs> it, 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 you know, uh, the, the, uh, Whitney just had this amazing show on, uh, Hopper and New York. And, uh, I, I thought it was, uh, I mean, Igor isn't parroting it, but it, he obviously, is on the same wavelength. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think you know through his art, he really did capture a, a lot of feeling and uh, a, a moment, um, particularly in the '50s in the Midwest. <clears throat> do you think it has to do with the the realism that's kind of slightly altered to be unidealistic? In other words, it's unidealistic because it's a little bit more impressionistic than actual realism. So mm -hmm. it's like an approximation of what people, kind of bohemian people, would want to see themselves as. Which is kind of, I think. No. It's, I think it's more like memory. I mean, the way that uh, the images that you recall aren't so precise, mm -hmm. and, and they're not, uh, and they're in a uh, same tonal register oftentimes. And so much of this book is about uh, memory because we anchor it in 1990 uh, Paris and he's looking back on his youth. So it's 30 plus years, 35 years removed. He's 35 years removed from the events uh, in Cincinnati and Chicago. So it's, it's going to be inaccurate. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, it'll have a certain visionary feeling about it. I think as memory does color things and and unites di uh, disparate elements. Mm -hmm. True. Any other questions? Igor, did you have any questions for us? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard. Yeah, we were having so many conversations about this project and I feel like I kind of uh, be satisfied with you know, knowing we are now compared to where we were, but you know definitely you know kind of interesting you know for everybody it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on you know I kind of touched on that you know general comic uh, strip comic book uh, medium. And comic book. Um, would, would you do another big book like this? Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to hear your uh, comments on because we went into little different kind of uh, waters with introducing this uh, realistic approach, or little more like a experimental approach, but it's very different from usual comic book kind of. Uh, Gender. So, what do you think about this, Ryan? What do you think? I the, it's breaking up a little bit. Can you repeat it? Yeah, I wanted to hear from you, maybe you, Ryan, or Brian, or uh, Edmund, about you know, how you feel about our way into realism compared to. Uh, major expected kind of styles and things appropriate for generally for comic books at this age. Yeah, I, I think it was really exciting and bold that you took that very painterly fine art approach to it. And that's what I had hoped for when we first started to, um, you know, sketch out this project. When, when I thought about what it would look like visually, I never thought that it would be a, a typical comic book per se, because mm -hmm. the, the themes are just too heavy and weighty. Uh, and, uh, you know, the second we saw your samples, I didn't know what I want until I saw it, right? It was sort of that kind of a thing where it's like, I knew what I didn't want, but once we saw what you could do, then I realized that I didn't want anybody else. <laughs> I fell in love, in other words. Like grinder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had also tested out, because it took a while to find an illustrator. I mean, the content was difficult for some illustrators to... Um, to actually draw an approach. Um, and it took some illustrators a long time to uh, come forward with that and, and let me know that like, hey, like this isn't, you know, I've been trying for months and I couldn't really, I couldn't put pen to paper on some of uh, the more graphic content. Uh, but some of it, it was really interesting to see the different spectrums that were coming in, how people were visualizing this um, in the script pages. Because I got, I got some pretty like grotesque, like very um, like, Egon, Egon Shile like style stuff yeah, from she's an artist in Berlin, which was like, I mean, if you think about that, that would have really made an interesting, I mean, it would have been closest to those scenes in the like the nightmare scene in the Paris, right. kind of, like, beast thing. 
Um, but that would have been the whole book. And I was just like, I don't know. I mean, I would love to see the whole book envisioned in that. But I don't want to spend two years developing that just to be like, well, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> but that's something else really I wanted to mention. To What's that? One other, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, depending on the the page or whatever, um, there there is uh, Igor does a lot of uh, uh, impressions of different kinds of styles. So he gets the you know the Renaissance, you know like Christ on the cross and all that kind of stuff. The drama of different styles. It's not predominant, but it's very mid-century in that. The mid-century was a time when the uh, public library intellectual young kid like Ed uh, was just learning about the art world, mm -hmm. aesthetics in general. And we have those scenes in the book with him going to the museum with his mother, yes. uh, juxtaposed with his scenes as a young man with lovers in museums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we should also speak about what a happy working relationship we had. You know, none of us have met Igor in person even though we've known him for four years. Um, <laughs> this entire project was done during COVID. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's in St. Louis and Etta and Michael are in New York. I was in New York. Ryan is in New Jersey and Florida and New York. Um, and we did this whole thing remotely, uh, never in person. And that, that proved uh, logistically very challenging sometimes because it's such a conceptual project that sometimes you need to be in the same room with the team as we sort of parse through some of the finer details. It's true, yeah. Not easy. It's right. not easy, no. <laughs> but it was happy. It was a happy working relationship. You, you know. I, I, I'm Sophia, Igor's daughter. And yeah. I'm, oh, hi, Sophia. Hi. I, and uh, it was really fascinating for me because every time I would visit, he would share his process. And I was incredibly amazed by the working relationship and how much you trusted him. And also I felt it was really unique how some decisions in terms of the writing were made uh, kind of based on the illustrative approach yes. and then the other way around. And I yeah. felt like yeah. the way that you were so thoughtful about how the imagery and the text coincided in terms of the pacing of the book is something really, uh, a really novel approach that I haven't seen in other graphic novels that really made the final result like so incredible because I, I feel like the visual strategy and the text were kind of so thoughtfully intertwined over this uh, process. That's a great observation, Sophia, and thank you for that. And yeah, it was really an organic working relationship. And I, uh, I really, like, I started my little presentation for saying that how much I share this trust and, you know, giving me so much great freedom from from you guys, um, yeah, it's really amazing. Happiest, yeah. happiest. Well, when, <laughs> when when you're working with someone so brilliant, it's easy, Igor, to have that trust. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very easy to trust you. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, from the the moment you submitted everything, there was no question for me. I didn't feel like I had to do any. Sometimes I would look at something because you're very spare about. Um, narration or so on, and you want to. Uh, Wouldn't Igor sometimes do a, a drawing that you would have to invent a language for? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah. Well, and also, yeah. the script was originally what, like 126, 150 pages or something like that. And I think early on, Igor was asked me if he had a little bit of free, free reign to um, expand the pages. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. To yeah. 270, I didn't really yeah. feel a lot. Of yeah, let's go a little bit. And uh, you are yeah. creative here. Yeah, script was incredible, and I read it as a movie. And basically, it's a, like a well composed, great film. And that was absolutely incredible piece. And you know, and I would say, like you know, definitely, first thing I did is reading original novel that I fell in love with because for me it was educational and also immersive experience. And I really appreciate, you know, this book is almost like nothing I read before, that it's really consists of 
segmented memories and basically you know, there's a lot of books like after biographical or some kind of you know, putting you in know, different times and periods but they always you know trying to put like really cons you know pr prolific timeline and you know kind of uh, thread that goes from beginning to the end and, and, so, and Boson's story kind of puts you in a different moments and sometimes you kind of you know like really how memory works mm -hmm. like when a person can, comes back to certain moments in its life and I really like the script was even you know expressing even more of these kind of things taking up from different times periods of protagonists to different areas and different uh, Igor, what, what was it like for you as a straight man to uh, write a, a, a illustrate all this gay stuff <laughs> uh, i think you know i you know it was hard decision in terms of like you know i i'm open to any concepts and ideas and philosophies and you know, lifestyles and you know pretty open-minded person but definitely you know i break with certain you know things i did before in terms of you know it requires some bravery in a way i mean bravery is a big word but you know some kind of you know i just you know i would say you know i didn't think a lot because i love the book i love the script and I decided to jump <laughs> to that pool and see what will happen. Yeah. Well, we're glad you jumped. <laughs> a pool of a new life. <laughs> a new life, yeah. yeah. But the other question is like, you know, it was surprising for me, like your acceptance of my work, not because straight man, but because of. You know, I was always like thinking, am I doing, because I'm not part of this uh, lifestyle and uh, culture. So, you know, understand, it's really, you know, it's reality. So my biggest worry would be like, would I, you know, translate certain feelings and certain episodes and certain moments right? Because I never experienced particular you know, relations or particular uh, things. But, you know, I was kind of also thinking a lot about universal right. aspects of the story because uh, one conversation we had with one of the uh, uh, book, uh, comic book uh, kind of uh, places, uh, I was talking about the universal qualities the book in terms of you know we were all boys and we were at some point awakening to our you know uh through you know from boyhood to uh, our adult life and our experiences somehow were similar because you know like i put this Paul mccartney song in our song list uh about you know song that called uh, Young Boy. And the words there that he was just a young boy lo looking for ways to find love. And that's universal message of the yeah. book. Yeah. And everybody is looking maybe in different places, but we're looking for that acceptance and love. Well, I think you hit something on the head. Ed, it, wasn't it true that in, um, I think it was in England, the book was very popular because a lot of gay and straight young readers identified with it right was it was it was it the uk in, in england it it, yeah. it, it 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 was a bestseller and it it uh and i think it the, and when i would give talks uh, the audience would be as much straight as gay but i think that america is the place where you have to belong to one tribe or another and they all hate each other <laughs> well, it'll, it'll be interesting too because we're about to release the um the digital and the print version of the graphic novel in the uk and um we're also going to be about to sign a deal to um have it translated into french um and the italians are interested too so it'll just be interesting to see the reception over there um yeah. in the different markets and cultures um which is really 
fascinating for me at least. I, I find that stuff really fascinating, just the conversation around it, and how it different differentiates from the US. I'm very curious too. Yeah. I want to read it in French. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about a Russian translation? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe for American Russians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ukrainian. Yeah. Ukrainian. Yeah. We'll oh, God. A, yeah, hopefully we'll have that conversation soon after the Russian army dispersed in a uh, Ukrainian lands and yeah. go back and maybe the world will be a real better, safer place. And we'll make the Ukrainian version and Russian version. <laughs> That'd be great. <clears throat> yeah, well, unless there are any yeah. other audience questions, I think that we should thank our incredible yeah. guests for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But thank you everyone for having us. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Thanks everybody. Thank Take care, care everyone. Bye. 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 We'll talk soon. Bye. 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 And I do have books available for sale over here doing triple duty. So if you'd like to buy a book, I'm ready. How much are they? After tax.